Hey guys, so what's going on? So I've been running my system on water for a little while now. In fact, I've been running with this system. This is the Cooler Master Sidon 120 here. And it's a it's a 120 rad single single fan cooler. And I've been running for a little bit less than a year. So what's been happening lately is that it's the pump inside here. I'll just take the case off here to show you a little bit better. If you can hear that noise, that noise is coming from the pump inside. And I don't think it's supposed to be quite that loud. So, but I've got the radiator up here. It's running with a fan above and below. So it's doing the push pull. It's keeping, keeping the CPU temperature nice and cool. But the only problem is, the only thing I'm worried about is that that pump is sounding loud. So I'm going to take it back. I'm going to send it back to Cooler Master and they've, they've agreed to do an RMA on it. So I've got to send it back. So in the meantime, I got to figure out, you know, what am I going to do for a computer while I'm sending this back to Cooler Master for replacement? Well, just so happens, have a replacement right here. We're going to put this in. We're going to test it out because I've heard a lot of really good things about the Hyper 212 Evo. So we're going to put it in the system. We're going to fire it up and we're going to test the di difference in the temperatures. Now with the, with the push pull configuration on the side on 120 on idle is staying about zero degrees Celsius and on load under full load, it gets anywhere from 30 to maybe 40. So it's staying very, very cool. So it's going to be interesting to see what the difference is between water cooling and air cooling. Now, granted, I know a lot of you already know this water cooling is going to keep your temperatures lower than air cooling. But for me, this is a, you know, it's a low cost alternative. It's kind of a spur of the moment thing. And I guess I should have known that if I'm going to send, if I'm going to get an exchange on something, I actually have to send it back first before I get a replacement. So I am thankful that they, that they are going to, you know, honor their warranty and, and, and do the RMA on it. So I will be getting one here back again for this type of socket because I don't think the, I don't believe the, the 120 will actually fit with the type of socket that I'm going to be putting in, or actually the type of computer I'm going to be putting in here in this room come February. And yeah. I'm going to be planning on going to an i7-6700K Skylake, so, which is an LGA 1151 socket, and I don't see it listed here on the types of sockets that this particular cooler does. So when I get when I get another side on, I'll put it back in into this build, and then when I do the new build, then I'll be putting something else in. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this out, going to put this one in, Gonna take one of the these thermal take ring fans. These are the these are the ring one one twenty millimeter LED fans. Of course, you can see because you know they're blue like the rest of my build here. So we're gonna pull all this out. Gonna pull the CPU block off. Gonna clean it off, and then we're gonna put the Evo two twelve in there. Put it back in. Then we're gonna run the temperatures and see how the comparison is between the two. So let's take let's take a look and see what's gonna happen. Okay, so unfortunately I didn't really take some video during the um, extraction process of the Sidon 120, but the thing that I was worried about the most was that this, this heat sink was not going to come off, or the, actually not the heat sink, the CPU pump was not going to come off of the processor very easily, but thankfully it actually did. So I, I took it off and I took some alcohol, I cleaned it up really, really good. And as you can see there, it looks all nice and shiny. So now it's gonna be ready for the installation. Okay, finally got it on. I'll tell you what, this thing, oh. I'll tell you one thing about this, this AIO cooler. You need a lot of patience to install this because I had to try twice to get this installed, but it's finally in place. Moves very little. It's tightened down. It's not going anywhere. So now all I gotta do is put the fan on. Oh, actually, I'm gonna going to replace this fan with this fan, and then we're gonna put it together. Then we're gonna fire it up and see how it looks. So. 
Bear with me while I do that. Okay, so now we have the thermal take fan firmly installed. And now all you have to do in order to get it put in, you just line it up on this side, and then you get it clamped down. I should do this the other way. Line up there. It just clamped on just like that. That should be all you have to do. So now we're going to run the cords through the back and then through the input onto the CPU header and then we will fire this bad boy up. Okay, it's all done. We got it swapped out. Whew, it took a little longer than I thought because what happened, what I realized is that when I mounted the brackets on the thermal take fan, I didn't position the cord to where it was going to go around the way I was wanting it to, basically go out the back and then and then down into the CPU header. So took it off, redid it, refastened it, re-screwed it in. It's in there solid. It's for some reason it still moves. The, this heat sink still moves about a little bit, even after you got it tightened down. Not quite sure why that is, but it's in there solid. So I have no worries about that. So let's turn on the button and see if all this is a good effort. Well, look at that. Wow. That is like dead silent. That's awesome. And and I and I didn't have a a fan splitter, otherwise I would have put the other ring fan over here on the other side, done like a more push-pull configuration. That's gonna be next on my list, so that way I'm gonna get that. But it does have the fan in the front. So basically it's going in from the front about midway, it's going into the case. Through, the, through this heat sink and then out the back so it's got a really nice good airflow. Didn't really need to put anything on the top so I put the Modivent cover back on there so let's finish booting it up and let's see how the temps look. Okay so I've got MSI Afterburner running and I got monitoring the CPU temperature. Wait are you freaking kidding me? Whoa, dude. Okay. I can't. Okay, th this is unreal. This thing on air at idle is the exact same temperature as when I was running it on the side on 120. And this is for a $30 air cooler. You gotta be kidding me. So what I thought I'd do is I'd try running one of my other games that uses CPU a bit more. So I'm gonna run Watch Dogs. Which sometimes, you know, some you know, it kind of stresses out the CPU a little bit. As you can see it's running at hundred percent right now and it's sitting about twenty-eight, twenty-nine C, which isn't bad. Oh, snap.
And now I can hear the fan a bit, but then again, I think that might be the GPU going. But yeah, it's sitting at about, you know, 24C, 42%. GPU is running about 72, which is about normal for an RX 480. Are there any issues there? I'd say we do pretty good. So I took the, the front, the side panel off. Just kind of give you an example of how the fans sound with everything open. Right now the GPU fans are spinning, the CPU fans spinning, and that's about all the noise you're getting out of it. Not getting any of that pump noise like what I was getting from the Cylon 120. So that's not bad at all. And then you put the side panel on, and it just deadens that even more. Okay, so, so what do I summarize from this whole experience? Well, at least I found out one thing. With, with an A10 6800K, I didn't really need to go water on it. I could have done just fine with an air cooler. In fact, th this EVO 212 runs just fine. It's not overheating at all. It's quieter than the water cooler. But, well, it's probably because, partly because of the, the pump noise, but on just air, because I've got good airflow going through the case, it's running just fine. So if you if you want something that's really good, listen to what the other reviewers have said. Get the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, and you really won't be sorry. Um, if you want to give it any more cooling, stick another fan on the other side, do a push-pull configuration. It does come with the extra brackets, so that way you can do that. Just make sure that you have enough fan hairs or just do a splitter and that way you can run them both on there. So I'm impressed. I mean, heck, for, for a cooler that's less than 30 bucks, that's not bad at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and get on out here. I'm gonna get this thrown up on, on the channel. I'm not gonna yeah, I'm not gonna throw it up on the channel. I'm going to toss it up on the channel and, and see how and see what you guys think. So what do you guys think of the Hyper 212 Evo? Do you guys like it as much as I've really found I really like it, or do you prefer a different one? Uh, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments down below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, go ahead and click that subscribe button for more videos. And until next time, be original, be random, enjoy life, and enjoy your computing.